Hello viewers, welcome to ARC. The topic that I'm going to deal in this video is Physiology of Bacteria in which I'm going to tell you about growth and multiplication of bacteria, bacterial nutrition and also bacteriosins. Starting with growth and multiplication of bacteria, cell division. In this, there is multiplication. Bacteria, it divides by binary fission. Nuclear division precedes cell division and this cell divides by a constructive or pinching process or by the ingrowth of transverse septum across the cell. Generation time The interval of time between the two cell division or the time that is required for a bacterium to give rise to two daughter cells under optimum condition is known as generation time or population doubling time. The generation time for coliform bacilli is about 20 minutes. Coming over to growth when the bacteria is grown in a vessel of liquid medium, multiplication is arrested after a few cell divisions, which is due to depletion of nutrients or accumulation of toxin products. So to replenish nutrients and removing bacterial cells, the bacteria is allowed to grow in solid medium, which forms colonies, and in liquid medium, their growth is diffuse. Bacterial growth curve. If the bacterial counts are made at intervals after inoculation and plotted in relation to time, a growth curve is obtained. The curve shows the following phases, lag phase, log phase, stationary phase and phase of decline. This graph is showing the bacterial growth curve in which there are the following phases, lag phase, log phase, stationary phase and phase of decline. Lag phase, there is no appreciable increase in the number though there may be increase in the size of the cell. This initial period is the time required for adaptation to the new environment during which the necessary enzymes and metabolic intermediates are built up in adequate quantities for multiplication to proceed. The second is log phase, which is also called as exponential phase. The cell starts dividing and their number increase exponentially or by geometric progression with time. Stationary phase. The cell division stops due to depletion of nutrients and accumulation of toxic products. The number of progeny cells formed is just enough to replace the number of cells that die. The viable count remains stationary as an equilibrium exists between the dying and newly formed cells. The last phase of bacterial growth curve is phase of decline. This is the phase when the population decreases due to cell death. Besides nutritional exhaustion and toxic accumulation, the cell death may also be caused by autolytic enzymes. When the total count is plotted, it parallels the viable count up to the stationary phase but it continues steadily without any phase of decline. This bacterial growth curve is showing both total count and viable count. In total count, there is no phase of decline which can be seen in this graph. The various stages of growth curve are associated with morphological and physiological alterations of the cell. In lag phase, there is maximum cell size which is obtained towards the end of the lag phase. Log phase, the cells are smaller and stain uniformly. Stationary phase, the cells are frequently gram variable and show irregular staining. Sporulation occurs and also many bacteria produce secondary metabolic products such as exotoxins and antibiotics. Phase of decline, involution forms are more common. Bacterial counts. Bacterial growth may be considered at two levels, increase in the size of the individual cell or also increase in the number of the cell. Two types of bacterial counts can be made, total count and the variable count. The first one is total count. The total count gives the total number of the cells in the sample irrespective of whether they are living or not. It can be obtained by direct counting under the microscope using counting chambers, counting in an electronic device, direct counting using stain smears, comparing relative number of the smears of the culture mixed with no number of other cells by chemical assay of cell components such as nitrogen. The next is variable count. The variable count measures the number of the living cells which are capable of multiplication. Variable counts are obtained by dilution and plating methods. In dilution method, the suspension is diluted to a point beyond which the unit quantities do not yield growth when inoculated into suitable liquid media. Several tubes are inoculated with varying dilutions and the variable count calculated statistically from the number of tubes showing growth. This method does not show any accurate values. In plating method, appropriate dilutions are inoculated on solid media either on the surface of the plates or as pore plates. The number of colonies that develop after incubation gives an estimate of the variable count. The principal constituent of the bacterial cells is water which represents about 80% of the total weight. Protein, polysaccharides, lipids, nucleic acids, mucopeptides and low molecular weight compounds make up the rest. Factors that affect growth. Bacteria can be classified nutritionally based on energy requirement. Phototrophs. Bacteria which derive their energy from sunlight. Chemotrophs. The bacteria which obtain their energy from chemical reaction. Autotrophs. Bacteria that synthesize all their organic compounds and heterotrophs which depend on profound organic compounds. Bacteria, they also require some of the inorganic salts which can be anion and cation. 
anion phosphate and sulfate cations which are sodium potassium magnesium iron manganese and calcium organic compound some bacteria require certain organic compound in minute quantities these are known as growth factors and bacterial vitamins oxygen requirement and metabolism in which there are two types of bacteria aerobic bacteria and anaerobic bacteria carbon dioxide temperature the temperature at which the growth occurs best is known as optimum temperature which is for pathogenic bacteria is 37 degree celsius for mesophilic it is 25 to 40 degree celsius for cyclophilic it is 20 degree celsius and for thermophiles it is 55 to 80 degree celsius extremely thermophilic bacteria have been identified which can grow at temperatures as high as 250 degree celsius the lowest temperature that kills a bacterium under standard condition in a given time is known as thermal death point the few other factors that affect growth are moisture and drying hydrogen and concentration light osmotic effect and mechanical and sonic tediosins the generic name bacteriosin was proposed for the group of highly specific antibiotic like substances produced by certain strains of bacteria which are active against other strains of same or different species bacteriosins are given specific names based on bacterial species of origin for example collins for escherichia coli Bacteriosins are proteins but some may have associated lipopolysaccharides which are derived from the cell wall of bacteria producing them. The synthesis of bacteriosins is determined by the presence in bacteria of glycogenic factors. Call factors are episomes and can be transmitted from cell to cell by conjugation and transduction. A cell producing a bacteriosin is immune to it but may be sensitive to other bacteriosins. Bacteriosins have very specific activity on bacteria being capable of killing some but not all strains of the species. bacteriosins kill susceptible cells without lysing them if you understood physiology of bacteria and this video was for any help to you please like share and subscribe thank you